All right, welcome everybody. Uh, for everybody that has joined us, we're going to give it just a few more minutes. Um, this is the Estimating App. Hey, Stacy. Good morning. Uh, estimating App tutorial. Uh, it's an open forum for questions. Uh, I'll go through the basics of adding yourself to the Estimating App and how to do the settings and stuff like that. And then uh, it's an open forum. So if you have questions about it, if you're not sure about it, uh, if you're on the fence about using it, uh, just let me know and I will try to answer all the questions you have. So I've got a lot of new exciting stuff that we've added this year um, to the estimating app and I'll go through that stuff here in a little bit when I start showing you my screen. So just sit tight for about a few more minutes and we'll be right with you. We get the app. Okay, welcome everybody to the estimating app uh, tutorial and uh, training. Uh, I just had a question from Brett. I know he's asking where you get the app. Um, so talk to your salesperson and they can actually help you out with that. Uh, Chelsea, can you confirm that um, you can hear me, see my screen, all that fun stuff? Yep, I can hear you, I can see you. And Brett, I'm gonna private message you and help you out with the app. There you go. And if you don't have it yet, um, we can get it for you. This is just, and this is going to be recorded. So you can always go back and watch it. Um, so I'm going to teach you the basics of the app. I can go through any section you want. Uh, if you're unclear about how the app works, uh, if you're brand new, whether you're brand new in this industry or you've been doing this for a long time, this is a great app for estimating and it, uh, it's going to help you. So you do not losing money in this industry. So we're very excited. We've had the app around for, um, this is about, I think it's the third season we've had the app around and we're continuously uh, building it and adding new features. We just added several new features that I'll run through here soon, uh, shortly. Um, so if you guys have any questions, Chelsea, what's the best way to ask questions? Why don't you run through that real quick? 
Yeah, hi guys, good morning. So the best way for you guys to ask any questions that you guys might have is to raise your virtual hand. So if you look towards the bottom of your screen, you're gonna see um, maybe under reactions, you'll see a raise hand feature and it'll give you a yellow hand. Um, or if you haven't done the update, it may be a blue hand. Um, the other option you also have is you can put your, your questions in the chat. Um, so it's pretty cool. This is a regular Zoom meeting, not a web webinar. So I can always unmute you uh, as well and you can answer your question live. So you have um, a few different options there. All right, well, thank you. And Mel, if you uh, see, uh, Mel, you got your camera on. It's up to you if you wanna leave it on. Um, Never, but uh, I can see you nice, nice and comfortable in your little rocking chair. <laughs> Not a big deal. Doesn't bother me. So, anyway, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and talk about this. We're going to jump in right into it and talk about the estimating app. This app, um, we've been doing this for a long time. My name is Matt Hyden, by the way, and I'm the owner of Clippa, and we've been doing uh, Christmas line installations since 2003. Uh, back then, did a lot of residential installs, uh, running crews all over San Diego, California. And then uh, after that, we started jumping into commercial. So that's all I do these days is commercial installs, but I do a lot of training videos. I do a lot of installations on residentials to help people out in trainings and stuff like that. So a lot of experience. And what we've done is uh, we've taken the formulas that we've used on decorating trees, roof lines, bushes, and we've taken that and put it into an app uh, form. Uh, so this will help you estimate all this stuff across the board. So whether you're doing roof lines, windows, and I'm gonna show you all the different uh, categories we have in here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through the basic setup and installation. And then um, after that, uh, I'm gonna go through a couple different sections, but if you guys have any questions, please ask. And then we'll do a more in depth training down the road um, where we're going through all the different sections and all that stuff. So let's get this started. So the first thing you need to figure out, this app is based on your, uh, your break even and what we call a break even. You do, uh, if you don't have the link to it, I think, Chelsea, can you put links on here? I can put it in yeah, the chat, I'll, right? Yeah, I'll go ahead and share some links in the chat as far as for figuring the break even. Clippa members can actually log into clippawebsite.com and you'll have yours on there. The okay. link that I'm gonna share is for everyone. So even if you're not a part of Clippa, you still have access to these break even calculators to help you um, figure out your break even. Okay, I will put that into the chat right now. So this, uh, you can see this exact screen. If you click on that link, that'll take you to, and, and like, as Chelsea mentioned, if you're a Clippa member, you should have access, back-end access to Clippa website where you log in. You'll see all sorts of forms, videos. There's all sorts of, you know, sorts of, uh, sort, sort of stuff in there. Uh, all, a bunch of stuff in there for I should say. Um, so if you want to go in there as a Clippa member, you can see the videos. We have, um, you know, videos on installations, how to do certain stuff. All the trainings are recorded there and there as well for you. If you're a non-Clippa member, if you have not attended one of our trainings, then you can, um, you can actually click on this website that I just posted and that link, and that'll take you to the estimate, um, I'm sorry, the break-evens, okay? So this is how we're gonna figure out our break-even. Essentially what we're trying to figure out is the app will not work without a break-even. So it's called a per minute break-even. That's what we have to figure out. So we have two different categories that we can figure out our break-even. If you wanna get down to the nitty gritty and really plug in a bunch of stuff, you know, your expenses, your auto truck expense, gas expenses. Now you want to figure that stuff out. When you're figuring it out, I don't want to take my auto expense for the full year. I only want to take the three or four months that I'm doing Christmas light installation. If I start in October, I'm going to take my auto expense for October, November, December, and then January for takedowns. Um, so I'm going to take three to four months of auto expenses, what I'm going to do. Same thing with gas. If this is your first season and you don't know this stuff, you might want, if you have an existing business, you might want to take those numbers in and plug it in. Worst case scenario, if you don't know any of the stuff, you don't have it yet, you can always do the labor only side. Real simple. So you're just going to plug in. We're going to go ahead and do labor, labor only first. And this is going to figure out my per minute break even. Essentially, if I step foot on a residence or a commercial property, what is it costing me per minute for that crew to stand there on that, uh, that property? So that's what we're trying to figure out. It's going to range. It's going to range on the low end from probably 1.5 up to the high end uh, to two and a quarter if you're paying your employees high, you know, more. 
So you want to make sure you're really figuring out what you're paying your employees, your crew leader. So with us, I'm just going to go ahead and start. We're going to go $25 for our crew leader. If you are the crew leader yourself, if you're running the crews and you're the owner of the business, make sure you put something in there for you. I would say probably anywhere from 30 to $35 an hour, even though you're not paying yourself, maybe you're not paying yourself that much in the beginning, you still want to put something in there for yourself. Okay. So my crew leader, I'm going to do 25. And then let's just say we're paying our employees 15. And I plan on running a four man crew. I'm going to go 15, 15, 15. I'm sorry, myself plus three. Okay. So you scroll down here, you can see my break even is $1.75. So it's costing me $1.75 per minute uh, when I step foot on any residence when I pull up there. It's costing me $1.75 per minute. Okay. So that's the number we're going to take and we're going to put into the app. And again, if I want to go over here and I want to do my truck expenses and all this stuff, if you want to figure out more in detail, you do not need to do both of these. Okay. So you're doing one or the other. But if I want to do a quick fix or a quick calculation, I can do this one. And you can change this anytime you want in the app too. If you decide like, oh, my expenses went up, I bought a truck, you can always go back and you can readjust it anytime you want, okay? So again, if you wanna go through this and put all your expenses on here, you can do that as well. You can see it's calculating down here below. below. I only have two expenses there, so my break even is pretty, uh, pretty small. Um, so if you wanna get down, you know, like I said, get down to the details, you can really go into the stuff here and fill all this out, okay? So for now, we're just going to take the $1.75 and we're going to go into our app. So when you first get into the app, this is what you're going to see. Okay. It's going to be a blank screen. Okay. If you're just getting in here, um, I see some people getting just getting invited in. This is recorded. So you can always go back and watch it. I saw Joe, you just popped in there. Uh, welcome, Joe. But if you guys want to, you can always go back and you can watch this later on. Okay. Uh, so anyway, we're going to get back to the app. When you first go on the app, you log in. If you don't have access already, just email your rep and they can, uh, they can get you access to this. Um, Clippa members, um, you know, they'll get you the pricing on that. Uh, so if you're not a Clippa member, they can get you the pricing for that as well. Okay. Uh, so when you first log in, you're not going to see anything. It's going to be blank, just like this. Okay. You can use this on, uh, um, you can use it on Android. You can use it on, uh, Apple, uh, anything you want, you can use it on your laptop, your iPad. Uh, the nice thing about this, if you're logging into the same account, then everybody across the board can see the estimates. So if you have a sales rep that's out in the field and they're doing an estimate and they want you to view it, as long as you're logged into the same account, uh, I can sit in my office and I can see the estimate that we did for that particular uh, customer. Okay, so once you log in, you're gonna go up to the hamburger menu up top left here, we call this a hamburger menu. You're gonna click on that. And this is just the first settings that we're gonna be setting up. So first of all, we have to set up our company information. So I'm gonna click on settings. And once we go in there, we're gonna have the plus sign down here. So I'm gonna click on this plus sign. And that's gonna allow me to initially set up my settings. So I'm gonna do my company name. I'm gonna call it Holiday Studio. Okay. This information will show up on the estimate that's sent to the customer if you decide to you know, send it out to the customer. Um, some of the new features we add this year, and I'll show you that in a, here in a little bit, we've got a signature pad that's in the app now. So you can actually have the customer review it, they can sign right there, and then you can send the estimate directly to the customer if you want to. Okay, so I'm just gonna input uh, Holiday Studio for the company, I'll put my address and my phone number. And then cell phone, if I want to add that, this is my default. This is what I logged in under to access the app. Okay. So um, that's not, I can't change that. That's not going to change at all. Uh, but I can add a sales email. If I want to send the estimate to my different email address, I can add that in there as well. My salesperson, I'm just going to put myself. And then what is my break even? We just figured out the break even back on this other screen here. Um, so we did one, I think it was 1.75. My break even is 1.75 right here. So that is where this is going in the settings. And I can change this if I want to go back and change it later. So my break even is 1.75. Cost me $1.75 if I'm running that size crew. Um, it's cost me $1.75 per minute uh, each time around the uh, residence. 
crew members, I'm going to be running four. Terms, conditions. Uh, if you're a CLIPA member, we do have terms and conditions on the back end of CLIPA website. Once you log in, you'll see it. You can copy and paste it. You can change these current terms, conditions. We usually do uh, terms, conditions such as 50% down, 50% due at time of installation. Uh, we'll put all sorts of stuff, you know, in there as far as acts of God, we're not liable for that or uh, vandalism, things like that. <coughs> Excuse me. So you can have whatever terms and conditions you want. Uh, in this spot, you can always go back and edit it. If you want to add something else, you find out down the road, you're like, oh, I want to add this. This will show up in the estimate that's sent to the customer as well. So you're all on the same page as far as what the terms and conditions are. And they'll sign that and it'll be right there. And, you know, so uh, you can cover yourself terms and conditions. So I'm just going to put, uh, I'm just going to type in terms and conditions. Whatever it may be, because my conditions are pretty long. But anyway, um, like I said, CLIPA members on the back end, it's available for you. Uh, you know, if you're not a CLIPA member, you can just type in your terms, conditions, whatever it may be. So markup. When we do our trainings, uh, we, teach, uh, we teach you to lease the product to the customer. We don't teach the sales route. We don't teach selling the product to the customer. We have a lot of benefits to doing that. If you're doing it the other way, that's okay. If it works for you, that's fine. Um, this, we just found uh, we've been very successful off leasing the product to the customer, and that's the way we train and teach. So what this markup is going to be, this is going to be for labor only. So keep that in mind. This is not lights. This is none of that. This is for labor only. So if it's costing me $250 uh, for my labor, that's my cost based on my break even and my number of crew members. If it's $250 for my cost to do a roof line, I'm going to put a markup let's say 100% for that, that's going to charge the customer $500. So I'm marking up labor 100% on that. This can be changed anytime. This is just your default markup. When you go into each, each section, you're going to have the ability to mark it up or down if you want. If you want to go into a section, you're like, eh, that's too much. You can drop it, drop it down to 75%. Uh, if you want to go higher, you can always mark it up to 125. This is just your default. So if you want your default to be every section, 125%, put 125% in here, okay? Labor tax rate, um, if you your state requires you to charge uh, tax, uh, tax on labor, you wanna put that in here and that'll calculate it for you, whatever the percentage may be. I'm just gonna put zero. Um, you do have to put something in here as a required field. So uh, if you do have a tax rate, if you don't, if your state doesn't require it, then uh, you, you definitely wanna put uh, zero there. Product tax rate, I'm going to put zero again because we're leasing the product to the customer. I'm not selling it. If you decide that you're selling it to the customer, then you do want to charge the customer tax on that if you're required to. So put a zero. If you're not going to charge uh, tax, then you know you put a zero. Whatever your tax rate may be, if you're going to sell the product to the customer, that's what you want to do. Okay, last of it, uh, you got a logo. So you can actually upload your logo and this will show up again on your uh, on the estimate that is sent to the customer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go in here and let me just search for, quickly search for a logo. Oops. Okay, so I'm just going to insert my logo. There it is. And last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click save. Okay. So I've got my settings in here. You can only add one setting. You can't add multiple. It does give you the plus sign down here, but you'll see, note, you cannot have more than one company in the setup, okay? So I'm just gonna hit cancel. Anytime I wanna edit it, I can always come back and you find this by going to the hamburger menu, settings. That takes me to this screen and then I can click on it. And if I wanna edit my break even, I saw my break, break even's too low or too high. I can just click the little edit button down at the bottom here. And then I can just change that to 1.85 if I want. I decided it's too low for me. I hired more employees or I'm paying my employees more. Um, you can always raise that up at any time. And that will change the new estimates. That will not change the existing estimates that are in there. You have to actually go in and edit those estimates if you want to, um, if you wanted to adjust accordingly. And then click save. And there's my, um, there's my settings right there. This is all the information that's in my settings. Um, and I can go back, you can do your settings right here. 
and change it anytime. Okay. The next step I want to do is I'm going to go add my products. So we're going to go up to the hamburger menu once again, and we're going to go to lights and garland. Okay. Again, it's blank. There's nothing in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my first product. I'm going to put a basic description of my product. The customer doesn't see this. So what I'm going to do is if I'm using 15 inch spacing across the board, let's say I'm doing roof lines and that's all I use is 15 inch spacing. I'm just going to put what I'm going to recognize when I select the product. Uh, I'm going to put that in the system. So I usually do bulk spool. And then if I'm using 15 inch spacing, I'll put a SP there. And then I can put warm whites. If all my bulbs are the same cost across the board. If my warm whites and my my uh, my multis and my reds and my greens, I buy for the same cost, which typically they are the same price across the board. I'm just going to put uh, bulk spool 15 inch spacing. If I want to put uh, you know C9 in there as well, that's all we use is C9 15 inch spacing. I can put that. Now, if I have fluctuating prices between bulb colors, then I'm probably going to want to change. You know, I'm going to probably want to do a warm white. And then I'm gonna have to set up another one for my reds. At the same price, I wouldn't worry about it. I would just do a basic description, something like this, okay? Is this a strand, yes or no? No, this is not a strand. A strand would be something considered like a mini light. A mini light strand is something I could put in there for 24 feet, that's what we use, 24 foot strands. So no, this is not a strand. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna put my cost per foot. So how long is this strand? It's not a strand, it's a bulk spool. So I'm gonna put one, uh, just one foot. And then what is my price per foot? That's the calculation I need to figure out, okay? If I buy my bulk spool, it's on my calculator here. Let's say I buy my bulk, bulk spool for, um, I get a, a good deal on it at 285 divided by a thousand feet. Uh, it's about 28 cents per foot, okay? So that's what I want to figure out. How many? How how much is it per foot for my spool? If I pull off one foot of my spool, what is my cost? So right there, it's 28 cents. How much did I pay for my bulb? Let's say I paid my bulb 80, 85 cents plus 0.85. So I'm at $1.13 currently. So it costs me $1.13 for every foot that I'm installing. That's the cost of the product. What I want to do on every single product, I, I do want to add a percentage to it. So on this one, and please, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask if you're getting lost, whatever, I can explain it again. Um, so right now my cost for uh, a foot of light line with one bulb in it is $1.13. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add 15% to that. Any product we input in here, whether it's a mini light or a bulk spool, we're always adding 15% because there's a shipping charge that you, know, you had those products shipped to you. Um, this app doesn't compensate for X wire it doesn't compensate for uh, for timers. It doesn't compensate for uh, you know males and females stuff like that clips. So that's why we're adding the 15% to this. So I'm at a dollar 13, and I'm going to add 15%. So we're at dollar 30. Essentially, is where we're at per foot is what we're charging the customer. This is on a lease option. If you want to sell it to the customer you need to adjust that price depending on how much you want to sell it for. So that's what you have to determine yourself. If a strand costs you $10 and you want to sell to the customer where they own the product, um, you, you, know, you decide what you want to charge them. You want to charge them $17? That's what you're going to put in here. You're going to put $17 for what you're charging them. I'm sorry, this that's for a strand, not, not for this. So you've got to decide if you're selling to the customer, what do you want to charge? This is a lease option, okay? My cost, plus 15% is what I'm putting in here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and click save. All right, so we've got the first product in there and this is just the initial setup. It does take a little bit of time to do it, uh, but you've got to initially set it up. And then once you're done, you don't have to tweak it too much unless your prices, your prices are flu uh, fluctuating, okay? So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna add another product. I'm still on the product screen. We're gonna go ahead and do a mini light. I'm just gonna put, uh, Mini lights, and again, if your mini lights fluctuate from colors, which some vendors it does, red's more expensive, warm whites, you know, cheaper. Um, if it fluctuates, then you may want to break it out and just do individual uh, strands here. So we'll do LED mini lights. I'll just put warm white because I know that's warm, warm light. 
I only use four inch spacing, but I can always put a description of just four inch. So I know if I'm using four inch and six inch, um, if we do have a mixture, then I'm gonna put four inch there. So I know this is a four inch strand. Um, we don't mix and match typically. We like to stick to one, you know, one or the other. So we'll just put four inch for this one. Is this a strand? Yes, it is a strand, okay? My strands are 70 lights, uh, four inch spacing. So that's 24 feet. So I'm gonna put, how long is my strand? It's a 24 foot strand. My cost, I'm just gonna make this easy. Let's say my cost is $10. Again, I'm gonna add 15% to that. So 10 times 0.15, so it's $1.50. So we're at 11.50 per strand is what I'm charging the customer, okay? Um, the app's gonna take in consideration when I'm decorating trees and stuff like that. It's going to take in consideration how many you're using, how many strands are you using? So if it comes out to be, let's say I do the calculations and it comes out to be 80 feet that I'm installing using strands on a tree, um, we can't cut many lights obviously. So what the app does, it's gonna charge the customer for four strands because they're 24 foot strands and that's gonna, you know, I've gotta use at least four strands on it, not three points, you know, two, five or whatever it is. So it's gonna charge the customer for four strands in this case. It's so right there, I'm gonna hit save. There's my two products. I can always edit these products. Can't change the name, but I can always go ahead and edit it. My prices are higher. Oops, you know, actually there's a price increase. Let's go put that at 11.75. We can change that anytime. I can also delete all the products if I want. So when I go back to, here's all my different products. If I decide that I wanna delete them all, let's say I got two here, I can click this button in the top right. And that allows me to bulk edit these products. And then I just hit the trash can. Once, once I select, I'm not gonna do that because I don't wanna delete them. We'll just leave them at that. Okay. So let's just go ahead and add another one. Let's say I do do, uh, let's say I do mini lights, six inch, or let's say I just do four inch. Try to keep the, the, uh, the titles consistent with what, uh, you know, what you said in there. Four inch, let's say reds. I use a lot of reds. They're more expensive. Uh, we'll just do mini lights, LED mini lights. Four inch spacing, red. Is this a strand? Yep. I uh, bought well, 24 foot strands. My price is a little bit higher. My price on those is $12. So we're at $13.80 when I add my 15% to it. And that's what it's going to charge the customer for every strand that I'm using on a tree, a bush, whatever it is, it's going to charge the customer $13.80 per strand. My cost was $12. Click save. There we go. We've got some products there. Okay. Go back in your hamburger menu. The Once you add all your products in there, you've got all that stuff in there. You want to go back in here and you want to add, if you're using lights, uh, I'm sorry, go back in here, there's wreaths. If you install a lot of wreaths, it's kind of the same method here. So what I'm going to do is type the wreath. Let's say it's a 36 inch wreath. That's what we use. Basically, what is my price? What is my cost plus 15%? Because it might be, I've got to run, uh, use X wire to run power to it. I've got to use some sort of a cable system to hook it up, whatever it may be. Um, we want to make sure we're compensated for that stuff. So let's say my 36 inch wreath is costing me, you know, $48 plus 720. So I'm going to charge the customer 5520. This is just for the product alone. This is the lease option. And the customer doesn't see any of this stuff. They don't see what we're charging them when we're doing leasing. You're not showing the customer what you're charging them for a product. Okay. Okay, so we've got a wreath in there. We can add more if we want. Just go down here. If we want to edit it, you can always click in here. You can edit the price um, if you want to edit that stuff. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and add an estimate here. Well, first of all, what we need to do, we need to add a customer. You can always go in and do an estimate. Anytime you go in there, first time, it's going to be blank, just like it is here. I'm going to click add an estimate. It's going to ask me for the customer is the first, um, first thing it's going to ask me. I don't have a customer yet, so I'm going to go ahead and add it. So it's gonna ask me customer name. I'm gonna do John Smith. I can enter the phone number if I want. I can enter all that stuff. I do need to enter a customer email if I want it to go somewhere. The estimate when I'm emailing to the customer, um, I can. You want to add that? You definitely want to add that because otherwise it's not going to go anywhere. 
You can add the customer's address if you want. Um, there is a feature up in the hamburger menu. I'm gonna go up here real quick. There is a feature where you can look on the map and actually see the locations of all the jobs. I don't have anything in here yet, so it's obviously gonna show me the world. Once I actually have an address in there, it'll zoom and pinpoint. We'll go ahead and add one real quick. It'll pinpoint it, so I'll put a real address in here. All right, let's start over here. Let's do John Smith. Don't worry about that. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Oops, Antonio Parkway. Okay, so there's the full address right there. Not going to worry about anything else here. This is not stuff we need to worry about at this point. So you're just going to click save once I have the customer in there. Basic stuff. Okay. And we're going to cancel. Okay, so John Smith should be in there as a customer. I had him go in twice. Oh, no, nope, that didn't save. Let me add him real quick. Sorry about that. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, there we go. There's John Smith. Okay. So now John Smith should be shown up on my map. If I go to my job locations, it's going to zoom in to exactly where it was. Okay. So John Smith is right in here. Um, go back to John. I lost John. Oh, there. Uh, where is John? There it is. I don't know why it's not showing, but there's John Smith uh, showing on the map in the tiny little area there. But um, I can click on the map. I can see that John Smith's right there. It gives me all of his information. Uh, we don't have anything yet. This is where I'd send my estimates to the customer. Uh, we don't have uh, we don't have an estimate yet for John Smith, but we're going to go ahead back to estimates here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add an estimate for John Smith. Customer, John Smith shows up now. Select him, okay. This is where we determine what section we're doing for John Smith. Here's all the different sections that you can add for this customer. Archways and arbors, balconies and fence lines, bushes, columns and pillars, palm trees. Uh, if you have palm trees, we've got a lot of palm trees out here in California. Uh, ridges, we do have roof lines, windows, wreaths. We have a tree inside wrap. We have a tree outside wrap. Inside wrap is gonna be branch wraps. Um, so if you wanna do an inside wrap, uh, that's that's probably one of the biggest opportunities to lose money is on trees if you're not estimating those properly. Uh, so that's you know the nice thing about the app it's going to help you make sure they're estimating trees. And also the calculations how many strands are you using. Um, it's pretty accurate as long as you're entering the correct data into the app. Uh, it's pretty accurate as far as how many strands you'll actually be using on that branch on that tree wrap. Um, outside wrap yard art displays and extra equipment extra equipment if I need to rent a lift or anything like that I'm going to add that to the customer. Okay, so we'll do the basic. We'll just do a roof line right now. Okay, so when I go to roof lines, the way we train you is difficulty level one, two, three, and four. Um, when we go through and we do have some examples of uh, different, what we consider a difficulty level one. Difficulty level one is going to be anything if I, it's a lower roof line, something that's simple. I can get it with an A frame ladder or, uh, you know, from the roof. Difficulty level one, how many feet am I decorating of difficulty level one? When I'm out there doing the estimate, I need to make sure I'm measuring that. So I need to have my, uh, my measuring wheel. Uh, however I do my measurements, I want to make sure I'm measuring the difficulty level roof uh, one. What am I, how much am I doing? So we go out to the house. Let's say we're doing 150 feet, difficulty level one. Difficulty level two would be something different. That's more of like a second story, walkable. I can still get up there. I can walk around, do whatever safely. Uh, difficulty level three is going to be a little bit harder. It's going to be something that's a little bit more difficult to get to. Uh, maybe there's a fountain in the way and the ladders, you know, it can't get up there. Uh, whatever it is, difficulty level four is going to be something that's really hard. So the app is going to take in consideration what difficulty level it is. It's going to multiply the factor and it's going to charge the customer accordingly. So difficulty level four is going to be something that's very difficult. Uh, you know, maybe I have to get a lift, you know, to do a difficulty level four. 
So I want to determine exactly how many feet I have for those. So that stuff you're going to have to eyeball. So you have to get pretty good at that. Or if you have some sort of tool where you can measure it from Google Earth or something like that, you can use that as well. Okay, so for this sake, we're just going to do 100 feet of typically uh, level two. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, staples needed. Not very important. This is going to add a big percentage to it. If you've ever done a staple job, if you haven't done a staple job yet, you're going to find out why we add a percentage to it. So whatever, uh, if, if you need to determine, okay, are we using staples? Are we using gutters? If this is just a gutter install, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to skip this section. But if this is a staple job, it takes a lot longer to do staple jobs. Anybody that's done a staple job knows exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, when you staple that, you've got to staple every single socket. And then you have to go back at the end and you have to get the ladder out and you have to pull out every single staple. It takes a long time to do those installs. So you want to make sure you're charging accordingly. And what I would do is I would click yes here if it was a staple job. If it's not a staple job, and I'm just going to leave it at no. Any special conditions, I can add any condition I want. Um, you don't need to add it here. You can always add it in your break even, which is down below if you want. But if there's a special condition I need to worry about, um, you know, maybe they want me to install at a certain time. You know, I want to add 10% to whatever I'm charging them. I can add that here and put 10%. They say, oh, you can only install midnight to 4 a.m. Maybe I consider that a special condition. Uh, I'm just going to leave it blank for now, but no. Description, what are we decorating? So you're all on the same page as far as what you're decorating on the customer's house. This will be sent over to the customer if you send them an itemized um, estimate. Some people like itemized estimate, meaning it's going to break down each, what we're charging for each section, roof lines, bushes, it'll break it out on the estimate uh, into different sections. It will not show them what the light charge is. It's gonna bulk in what, uh, what my light charge is and what my labor charge and just say roof lines, decorating, the, it's gonna give the description and then it's gonna show what we're charging them for that. Decorating, let's just do decorating upper and lower roof line. Front only, pretty simple install, okay? Okay, so we can actually take a photo of the property if we want. Uh, you would just click on here, right here. If you have your phone, you would just click this and it would allow you to take, uh, it allow you to take a photo. And we'll just go ahead and see if we can find a photo here. Got some logos. If I can find something picture. Okay, well, I'm just going to insert one here. Let's just do my logo. Okay, so I can either take a photo, which if you're in the field, you're going to take a snapshot of the photo of the house. We did add this feature this year where I can actually click here and I can mark it up all I want. So if there was a roof line here, I'd be able to mark it up. You know, if I want to, if this is a roof line, I'm sorry, I don't have a picture of a roof line picture, but um, let me see if I can get that real quick. Give me a second here and just sit tight. I'll save one real quick. Okay, so let's go ahead and insert this one. There we go. We snapped the photo of the house. There it is. Uh, actually, it's actually a small image that I took. It's not a very big image. So anyway, this would be a full screen if I took a picture. Um, so I would be able to edit this. Obviously can't see it, it's real small, but I can actually draw this in if I wanted to. But if you actually took a photo, it would fill up this whole section right here. It'd be a lot bigger. Let's see if I can get a bigger picture. That's good. Let's see if it came out saved up bigger. Yep, 
and you can undo it too if you draw if you you know your sketch wasn't very good you can always undo it right here okay well it's not coming any bigger but when you take the photo it'll be a lot bigger um so you'll be able to draw on it uh, you know obviously this is very difficult because it's real small but i could draw on the roof line while we're decorating this is what we decided to decorate right here and here and this will go on the estimate that is sent to the customer so again we're all on the same page we know exactly what we're doing uh i'm going to go ahead and scroll down if we're done with the photos and I'm going to do a markup. There's my default markup that I put in the system and my settings. So I can decide right now, my cost on this install, which is 150 feet of difficulty level one, 100 feet of difficulty level two, is $208.13. So that would be my cost. That's what it cost me to do this job, not including lights. Okay, we're going to add that here in just a second. So my break even is 100% markup. Um, so it's $416 and 26 cents is what I'm charging the customer right here for that install. Okay. And this includes takedown as well. Type of lights. We're going to go ahead and select that. We decided that we're going to do the bulk spool, 15 inch spacing C9. So I'm going to go ahead and select that one. I don't have any other options. And that's going to, it's 250 feet that we're decorating. So up here, 150 here and 100 here. And it's charging the customer per foot based on what I put in the system, $325, <clears throat> excuse me, for those lights. So my total cost to this customer is $741.26 for me to install on that roof line, uh, just the roof line right there, okay? This is a guesstimate, so you gotta really, you know, you don't wanna look at this and be like, oh, this is how long it's gonna take me, um, you know, less than two hours, because, you know, people move at different paces and stuff like that. This is just to kind of give you an, somewhat of an idea uh, things happen, you know, you can't find the power source or you trip to GFI. So it's not a perfect science when it comes to how many minutes this is going to take you. This is per crew. So it's saying if I take a crew of uh, myself plus three out there, it's going to take us about an hour and 12, uh, I'm sorry, 112 minutes to do that. So less than two hours to install that roof line and that and takes in consideration uh, take down as well. Take down is probably on that roof line I just showed you that we're whatever we're decorating. It's pretty quick. It's going to take me probably about 15 minutes to take down. So, okay, we're going to go click save. And now we've got uh, our customer, John Smith. So anytime I want to come back in and add more to John Smith, I can click on estimates, which is my default. And there we go. We got roof lines and this is giving me the labor charge, the light charge, and then total cost. This is not anything you show to the customer. You don't show this part to the customer. Um, you definitely don't want them seeing this. Okay, I can also look at a summary. So this is a summary breakdown. All my customers would be here if I have multiple customers and it would tell me my total cost right now is 741.26 for John Smith. And they would have my other sections, which we're gonna go ahead and add another section here. And you'll see what I'm talking about. Status, I can see what the status of John Smith is. Right now it's pending. If uh, John Smith, hey, hey, that's all we're doing is roof lines. Yeah, let's do it. That sounds good. I can click right here. I can edit this and I can change John Smith to sold, save. And I go back to status and he's in the sold category. So if we had multiple customers in here, then you would see sold, pending and lost in here. So I can I can categorize them based on, uh, you know, if they're moving forward or not, uh, whatever the case is, or if it's just pending, I can have it in a pending status, okay? I'm going to click on uh, estimates again. I'm going to go John Smith. We'll add another section down here, bottom right. I'm going to click on there. John Smith's already in there. I'm going to click the section I want to add. Let's say we're going to do some bushes. Okay. Bush area one. So how we tell you to calculate bushes is you want to figure out the surface area of what you're decorating. So if I'm decorating a bush on the, the front and the top, and let's say it's seven feet uh, wide by four feet tall, that's 28 feet for the surface area. So let's say the top's the exact same. So I'm gonna put 56 feet decorating area in here for the bushes. 56 feet. Okay. If I'm doing multiple bushes, I can break it out by bush if I want or I can add them all together. It just depends on what you're doing. Maybe there's one, another bush next to it. You know, I'm doing the house and 
The bushes on the right and the left are the same. They're both 56. I can double it if I want to do that, or I can just add it here. Or my other option is just leave it there. Let's say I have another bush and we're doing the same. You can combine them all together, however you want to do it. Um, you can do it with however you want. So if I want to combine them, we're going to do 112. There's two bushes, they're 56 each, or we can break it out and do 56 and 56, okay? Special conditions. Every single section is going to have special conditions. So if you have any special conditions that you worry about, um, you can add that here, and that's going to add a percentage to the labor. Okay. No special conditions on this one. So we're going to do description. This will show up in the estimate if you do an itemized. Decorate um, bush on right and left side of house. Whatever description you want to put in here, that's going to remember you so you remember what you're doing. Again, take a photo. Um, what you can do is tap it. <clears throat> you can take a photo of the bush and then you can draw on it however you want. You know, th there's no bush in here. Let's just say this is our bush. Oops, that's kind of a bad drawing there. Sorry about that. <laughs> so let's say this is, this is our bush, our photo we took. Okay, then I can just put description. We're just going to decorate this, you know, however we want. And again, send that to the customer. That is going to show up the estimate that is sent to the customer. Um, so again, we're all on the same page. I would probably take a photo of the house and the bush on the left, and then I would just put you know zigzags through it, and uh, you know show them that these are the bushes we're decorating, so they know exactly what uh, you know what we're doing out there. Use a different color if you want; it doesn't matter. Okay. Again, our default markup and that's 100%. Uh, for me to decorate those two bushes, um, not a very big bush. It's not going to take me very long. If you've ever done bushes, you know how easy they are. And then takedown is so simple. Um, so right now, <coughs> excuse me, my labor, my total cost for me to go do that uh, is $28. My labor charge, which is marked up 100%, for those bushes is $56.12. Haven't even had my lights yet, so I'm going to add my lights. So I'm charging the customer $56.12 for labor. Add my lights, my mini lights. We're going to use four-inch spacing, warm whites. Add that in there. Based on how we install on bushes, we like to do random S patterns. So we, when we weave through it just like this, you weave through and you're doing random S patterns. Um, so based on that, total feet is 364 feet. So that's saying that I'm going to use roughly uh, 15 strands on those bushes is what I'm going to be using. Uh, bushes, you know, they use a lot of you know, a lot of lights on bushes because you're weaving throughout. Um, we don't use net lighting or anything like that. Um, so you can, you know, you go through a lot of, uh, that's about seven per, probably about eight per bush is what you're using. And that's not too far fetched. Um, so based on, and this is not a perfect science, but it's roughly going to be about that price. So uh, light charge is $180, 188. Okay, so that's what I put per many light strand. It's taking in consideration it's 24 feet, 364 divided by 24. So that's 15.1. It's charging the customer for 16 strands is what it's charging them. So 188 divided by 16. My cost is $11.75, which I put in my settings. Because remember, I took my cost plus 15%. So it's charging the customer $11.75 per strand that I'm using, okay? Total cost to decorate those bushes, $244.12. It's gonna, it says it's gonna take me 15 minutes to do it, which is uh, pretty close. I'm gonna click save. All right, so now we've got multiple sections for our customer. So I go back to estimates, I can look at summary. These are just different areas you can look at. Summary, here's John Smith. It gives me, again, if I have another customer, it'll say, uh, Matt Hyden right here. It'll list all the sections I'm doing for Matt Hyden. John Smith calls me. He's like, I really love to do it, but I don't want to do the bushes. Perfect. What I can do is I can actually come in here and click the edit button in the top right. And I can delete whatever section I want. I just click there and I would hit delete. That would delete the bush section. But we're not going to do that. Status, John Stiff. He's still, we sold him. He's good to go. He's ready to go. Okay. Click back in estimates. There he is. Let's go ahead and add, let's see. Click on John Smith. We can add another section. Let's go and do a tree because those are, let's do a tree inside wrap. Okay, 
So tree inside wrap, and, and this is the number one place you can lose a lot of money if you're not bidding these properly. So it's important that you take time when you're estimating these trees to do the measurements, okay? If I'm doing a tree and I'm decorating the trunk and then they wanna do, this is for inside wrap. So inside wrap, we consider all branch wrap is what it is. People call it branch wrap or inside wrap. That's what we call it. Outside wrap would be the canopy, the outside canopy, okay? So in this trunk data, what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure the height of the trunk. How high are we decorating? So let's say it's a six foot trunk. Okay. What is our vertical spacing when we're decorating it? And we do have a lot of videos and I have a lot of uh, uh, photos of explanations of how to calculate stuff if you need to go back and reference that stuff. And I'm still making a lot of videos. I'm gonna do some videos and showing you actually how to estimate these trees. So you can watch it again if you want, rather than going back to this video. So I'm working on those videos. I'll have them out probably in the next uh, couple months here. What is my vertical spacing? Very important. What am I decorating when I'm going up the tree? How far apart are the lights? So typically, you know, it's anywhere from four to six inch spacing. If you would do a real tight wrap, you've got to make sure you put that in there. If I'm doing two inch spacing, you could use a lot more lights on this tree. So you want to make sure you're calculating this correctly. So we're just going to say we're going to do six inch spacing. Average circumference, if the tree circumference fluctuates, you wanna find out what the average is, okay? So you do need to take out your measuring uh, uh, tape or whatever you're gonna measure it with. You've gotta measure the circumference of the trunk. Most are, you know, typically they're about the same, you know, throughout the whole trunk. So you wanna take the average circumference, measure what the circumference is. We're gonna say in this instance, it's, uh, it's probably three feet, 36 inches. How many trunks do I have? If it's a split off tree, we got two trunks. If it's just a straight trunk, we've got one trunk. That's what we're gonna base it on, just a pine or something like that. Okay, so if we have multiple trunks, we would just move that up, but we don't, so we're just gonna leave it at one. Wrap height and feet. Now this is the branch data. So you can see branch wrap data right here. This is the branch data. How high are we decorating? Not from not from uh, the ground up, but you wanna, how far, how, from where the trunk ends out, how far are we decorating? We're gonna say we're gonna decorate six feet up. Branches, vertical spacing. What is our vertical spacing that we're doing? Typically we do a little bit smaller on branches. So I'd probably say about four inch vertical spacing. How far apart are the lights as we're decorating up the tree? Larger circumference. You've gotta do some measurements. You can try to eyeball it, get really good at eyeballing it. Um, test yourself, go out and be like, eh, I think that's about 36 circumference. Measure it and see if you're close. Typically, people are way off when they do that stuff. So uh, I, I would stay away from uh, trying to estimate trees from pictures. Um, we had one of our CLIPA members uh, try to do that. And when he looked at the picture, it didn't look very big. But when he put somebody next to it, it was huge. So when he estimated to the customer, it was about 90 strands he was going to use. He actually used about 170 strands. So you can see right there, you can lose a lot of money, uh, you know, if you're not estimating it correctly. So... Larger circumference, this might be something you have to eyeball, get good at. What is our largest circumference? I'm not gonna take the, uh, I'm not gonna take the smallest one. If the branches are all different sizes, I'm gonna take my largest circumference and use that. So let's say around it's, uh, let's say it's you know, 12 inches circumference. How many branches am I decorating? Yeah. You, wanna, you wanna measure, and you wanna see how many you're decorating. So in this instance, we're gonna do six branches that go off. Any special conditions? Nope, we don't have anything in that. Decorate. Inside wrap. Uh, with warm whites, minis, whatever, whatever description you wanna put. Photo, I would definitely take a photo and mark this up. You know, what, what, I, what I would mark up is just some simple, you know, uh, simple markups. So let's say we got our tree here. Uh, and say I actually took a photo. I'll do my best here. To... Yeah. Okay, so let's say that's our tree. I took the photo. I've got the tree. I would do some simple markups for the customer that we're doing right here. We're decorating this. And then what I would do is I would also mark on here what height we're going. So the customer knows and you know, your installers know exactly how high we're going. We're going right here. And we're going, we, all of our branch wraps, we try to go even throughout the whole tree. I don't want to decorate one six feet and then the other one, you know, three feet. 
So I tried to keep it consistent across the board. So let's say we're going here, here, and here. That's a good opportunity to mark that up. So again, this was sent to the customer. They see like, oh, okay, we're only going this height. I've had it before when we're out there in the field and we decorate to a certain height. And I'm like, no, 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 that's not what we talked about. Sales reps, yeah, that's high enough. And you know, there's this he said, she said type thing. So let's let's get rid of that and make sure that we're marking this up to show the customer like this is how high we're going. Got Again, my markup for labor is 100%. So my total break even is $53. It's $106 for the, the charge of the customer for labor on this. Type of lights. We're going to use mini lights. Uh, probably going to use four-inch spacing on this. So it's 172 of feet of light. It's charged the customer $94. So for us to do that size of tree, uh, it's going to cost charge the customer $200.56. Okay. Click save. We've got our roof lines in there. I want to go to summary. I want to see a breakdown of all the customers. John Smith, right now he's at 1184. He told me his budget is about a thousand. Oh, Matt, that's a little bit high. What can we do? Well, we could take the trees off or we could adjust this. I could always go in. All right, John, here's what I'll do. I like you. So what we'll do is I'm going to go in here. You're not telling him this, but what you can do is you know, maybe take a little hit here. Oops. And you should do a 75% markup. Save that. Let's see where we're at. Getting closer. We need to obviously need to drop it more than 1133. So where could we pull from? Um, you know, that's what you got to decide on. Do you want to drop too much? You know, maybe we just can't do the, uh, you know, that would probably get us down. We can't do the bushes. Uh, you know what? Let's just drop the bushes off. Okay, let's get you down around where your budget is. If you can't sell them on it, convince them. We'll just click bushes and we'll delete. Yep. Okay. We're about $900. So that took off a lot more. Oh, well, let's do this. Let's do, let's wrap some more trees, whatever. Okay. I go into status. We got them sold. We're good to go. When I click in here, what I can do is I can actually send this customer. Um, I could send them the, uh, this is goes to send a customer. This is just, Christmas light installation type thing. This doesn't say much on it. Um, it just gives you uh, a full price. I can also send it to the customer um, itemized right here, or I can send it to the office itemized. So I'll send it to, let me see, I'll send it to the office itemized. That'll go to my email and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay. This is, this is also the screen where the customer can sign. So let's say the customer is ready to go forward. They wanna do it. This is where I can have them sign. Yeah, it looks great, man. Let's go ahead and do that. I tap this. If it's on my phone, they can sign right there. Put my signature in there. And then we are done. Okay, if I, I'll send this to the office again. Yeah, let me go ahead and get that so you guys can see. All right, it's going to take a minute for my email to load here. Um, it's also syncing too, so it's just going to take a minute. You can let it sync in the background or I can click here and it'll sync it for me, um, but it'll sync here in just a minute. Do we have any questions? Anybody? Uh, Chelsea, how are we looking at questions? <laughs> Bob Ross. Thanks. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Courtney. No questions. Everybody's understanding what's going on here. Any sections you guys want me to show you through? I'm going to go ahead and sync here. So if I click sync, it's going to do it. It does it in the background. You don't have to click sync, but I'm going to go ahead and do it right now. So I'll just send those estimates so I can show you guys the estimates that go out. You can see it's saving changes right here. Oh, you're saying I'm, I'm Bob Ross because my coloring. 
Okay, so here's one of the estimates that came through. Let me go ahead and open that up and show you guys. All right, so here's what the estimate will look like. Uh, going to the customer, you can see it's not a very good uh, uploaded image that I had there. Um, sent on date, uh, the total for the customer, 889. It's got all my information. This is all the information from my settings that I had in there. Uh, here's the customer's information that I inputted. Uh, all their information's right here. This is the itemized. So this is what an itemized looks like. It's gonna say roof lines, decorating upper and lower roof line. That's exactly what I typed in each you know, section. Decorate inside wrap with warm light minis. Gives them a total cost. It's not giving a breakdown. It's not telling them because I'm doing a lease option. This is me leasing it to them. Next year, I'm going to charge them the same price. Good news is, is my margin just went the first year. I've got to go buy those lights. So my margin on this project, on this uh, job, is probably about a 45% margin uh, my first year. Next year, it's going to jump up and be about a 75% to 80% margin. So it's a lot higher the second year because I own those lights. I'm charging the customer the same but I'm not having to go buy those lights. And this is why, one of the reasons we like doing the lease option. I own those lights. So if John Smith decides not to renew next year, guess what? I'm gonna take that roof line, those lights, I'm gonna put on somebody else's. On that new house that I'm doing, uh, I'm gonna have a higher margin because I already own those lights and I can mix and match all I want. Maybe I have to add 10 feet of roof line or maybe I have to take off 10 feet of roof line. Whatever the case is, I have that. I own that product. I can use that somewhere else if I want to. Okay, so there's, let's see if I get more estimates in here. Okay, uh, let me scroll down here. There's the photos, the photos that I took, the one I drew. Um, so there's the first photo of the roof line. So again, this shows up. Here's my, uh, my terms and conditions. I didn't type anything in there. This is where your terms and conditions will actually show up. Customer agrees to pay this, 50% uh, down, 50% time of install, blah, 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 whatever you decide you wanna say um, throughout that. Whatever you experience in your installations, like, hey, I need to add this to my you know, terms and conditions, make sure you add it in there. Okay, I've got another estimate that came through here. Let me see what we got. So this is what the estimate will look like if you just do, you do have the itemized option. If you just wanna send a total cost to the customer, this is what you're gonna see. Um, you're going to see it's Christmas light installation, residential Christmas light installation, 889 total cost. I don't charge for material. I don't tar charge for labor. Uh, total due is 889. You can see the customer. This is where I did that signature. Customer did sign. Again, terms and conditions. I didn't type anything really. Just I just typed this and then my photos. Okay. And there you go. There's your two estimates, two different types of estimates. So itemized and then just full blown estimates. Cause we had people that just like to do it different ways. Some people like to send them itemized, see that breakdown. And then some people like to send it the other way. Okay, if I wanna add a new customer, just go in here, your customers are right here. And I can add a new customer down here. Go. No schmo. Okay. And Dave. So we've got Joe Schmo. I didn't put anything in there uh, for Joe Schmo. Uh, just, you know, if, if I didn't put his email address, it's not going to email to him, obviously. Um, here's the status. This is what you'll see sold, pending. Joe Show is still, is still, uh, still pending in here. I can add another customer. Mike Green, just Mike Green, save. Okay, Mike Green is pending. Let's say Mike Penn, he just called me, didn't want to do it. Oh shoot, lost it, okay. So we'll just do that. Status, you'll see three different categories. I've got my lost estimates, I've got my pending estimates, and then I've got my sold estimates um, in here. Okay. Anytime I want to send the estimate to the customer, again, I just click on their name, send a customer, send to office. I've got send office itemized. If I just want to send it to my crew or whoever's in my office, I don't want to send it to the customer. I've got send customer itemized. So you have several different options. John Smith wants to do it. This is a new feature we added this year. Great, John, you know, we got your signature. That's awesome. 
you can actually schedule the install. We have, do have a calendar on here. We can actually go in and schedule the install. That's perfect, John. When did you want to do it? Oh, well, let's do it. Uh, we'll put John Smith. Install date. John Smith said he wanted to do it. God, he wants to do it early. That's great. You want to do it uh, want, for his uh, March parties having St. Patty's Day. So he wants to install on the 15th. Perfect. What time do you want to do it? All right. Let's do uh, 10 a.m. By default, what it's going to do once I put 10 a.m. in there, it's going to add two hours. You can always change that if you feel like it's going to take a little bit longer. Um, so the default is two hours. It's just saying it's going to block off two hours for this time of install. If I feel like it's going to take longer, if I feel like it's going to take shorter, I can adjust that accordingly. Click save. Okay. I've got my month. Got to get my camera out of here. And then we have John Smith. If we go to next month, oops, I gotta get, sorry, I gotta get my video out of here. There we go. We got John Smith on the 15th. So I can see all, I've already added some here, obviously. Um, I've got John Smith down here and uh, he's on the schedule. So this is a nice option too. If you wanna, uh, you know, if you wanna put your schedules in here, if you use a CRM, uh, you can use that as well, whatever you wanna use, but it is right here in the app if that's something you wanna, you wanna add. So. I want to get to the schedule. I just go back here, hamburger menu, and it's in the schedule. Month. I can see the month. I can see the week. I can see what we're doing for the day. We're not. We don't have any installs on this day. Okay. Garland, same thing. If we're gonna, if we're gonna add Garland, we want to go in there. Um, we want to add this. Type of lights. I'm just gonna put. Uh, maybe I use nine by fourteen. That's a nine foot garland, um, lit garland. Maybe I do lit and unlit. So I'm just gonna put a description. Is this a strand? Yes, it is. Because it's not something we're gonna cut. So what is the strand length? It's nine feet. What does my garland cost me? And my garland cost me uh, $30. Again, I'm gonna add my 15%. So 30 times 0.15, I should know that. Um, so that's 34.50. That's what I'm charging for every single strand that I'm decorating on a customer's house. I'm charging $34.50 per strand. That extra 15%, as I mentioned earlier, is to compensate for X wire, males and females, timers, stuff like that. Click save. That'll be an option within my estimates. So when I go to estimates, I've got John Smith. He's the only one with an estimate. Add a section for John Smith. We're gonna do columns and pillars. We're doing his columns in front of his house. Same questions you're asking when you're decorating trees. It's the same formulas. So laying your feet, how high are these columns? These are 15 foot columns. What is my vertical spacing I'm decorating? We're gonna use garland. So it's gonna be a little bit wider because you need to have a gap in between garland. So I'm gonna say it's about 12 inches for my spacing. That'll give me about, uh, probably about, you know, four or five inches between the garland strands. Have average circumference on a column pillar they're typically about the same all the way up and down. So I'm gonna say this one is 48 inches, pretty big one. How many are we doing? We're decorating the, the both in the front. So we're doing, we're gonna do two of them. Am I using lit garland? Yes, I'm using lit garland. Description, decorate front pillars. Pillars with lit garland. You can put warm light if I want, you know, whatever description you want to convey to the customer if you decide to do itemized or if you send this to your office so they can see like, oh, okay, we're decorating with warm white, lit garland, easy. Then take a picture, snap a photo, you know, these are my columns. Let's just say column one here, column two, right here. Then you can draw on it and you can put, okay, I want to decorate it like this, we're doing this. But again, this would be a photo you're taking and then you would draw the green lines on it to show the customer that we're decorating these two columns. Okay, markup is 75%. I'm gonna change that. I'm gonna go 125%. Break even is $53. I'm charging the customer 119 just for my labor charge for those two columns. Type of lights, we've decided we're gonna use the nine by 14, lit garland, 194 total feet, which 194 divided by nine, because they're nine foot sections, it's charging the customer for 22 garland strands is what it's charging them for. 
light charge 552, total cost 671, 88 to decorate those, those pillars. And those are pretty large. There's a 15 foot pillar and that's pretty large. Okay, there's my columns and pillars. And if I wanna go see summary, I can see a summary of all my different customers. John Smith is the only one in here. We're at $1,500 right around. John said, hey, $1,500 is my budget. $1,400 is my budget. Oh, well, John, we're a little bit above, but what do you think? I think it would be great. Yeah, very ele elegant. Um, yeah, so that's it for that. Um, there's a lot more sections you can go in here. If there's anything you guys want me to go over as far as section, I'm not gonna go through every single one of them. But if there's anything you want me to tackle and go through, I can do that. Uh, you know, extra equipment, it's just real simple. Uh, for John Smith, extra equipment, where what is the description of the equipment? The lift, I need a lift for those columns. What is my cost? So number of uh, needed for equipment one, uh, oops, I put lift, put light there. See, number needed. I just need one, one lift. Actually, you know what? I got it. I got. I wouldn't need it for the takedown, most likely. But if I did need it for the takedown, I'd put two there uh, for install and takedown. And then, what is my price per day for the equipment? So it costs me. I get a lift for four twenty-five. Oh, this is where you put how many days? I'm sorry. This is where you put how many days? Uh, I only need one lift. $425 it cost me and how many days do I need it? I just need it for the one day. If I wanna mark that up, I can, no special conditions. You know, you take a photo of the lift, I'm gonna save that. That's gonna add it to the customer right here, extra equipment, 425. So that'll add to the, so we're about $1,900 roughly. Yep, 1986, 67. That's what we're charging the customer. Well, geez, man, that's expensive. Well, I have to use a lift because I have to get up to those pillars because of this, 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 whatever the case is. But anyway, um, you have the opportunity to add extra equipment in there uh, if you need to. Okay, anybody have any questions on any of the sections? Now's the time to ask. Show a customer copy what they receive. Uh, it's the same, uh, I showed that, Joe, uh, it's the same, it's this. It's either this, if I said it itemized, so I have the options of going in here. I'd go to status, I'd go to customer, John Smith. So I have uh, send office. This is just the, this is gonna be this one, which just says residential Christmas light installation. It's gonna give them a total price. This is exactly what the customer would see right here. This is the same one that would be sent to my office if I were to send it to my office. If I were to click this button, send customer itemized, this is what they would see. They would see all this information, decorating upper roof lines, Again, this is my description that I put in each section. So I can put whatever I want. These are my photos that I took. This is where I drew, you know, I took, I mean, what you're gonna do is take a photo and you're gonna draw on it yourself, but it does show um, all the stuff. It's got the terms and conditions, as I mentioned, and then all my pricing. So this is, this is exactly what they would see. Okay. That's a good question. Any other questions? I'm always available. So if you guys have any questions, don't hesitate to call me. If you need, if you're just not getting it, I want you to make, you know, I wanna make sure you guys understand this. If you decide you wanna use it, don't want you getting frustrated, please call me. I'm, you know, I'm not gonna sit here and help you with every single bid, but I wanna make sure you understand what the capabilities of the, uh, of the app are and make sure you feel comfortable doing it. This is the biggest you know, thing that people get in this industry and then get out of this industry because they think they're making money, but they're really not because they're not charging enough. They're not properly bidding uh, housing, you know, rooftops and stuff like that. And I know a lot of guys are like, oh, I just charge $5.50, you know, per foot on roof lines. Well, that's great. That's fine and dandy, but you have different difficulty levels. I can do, you know, a single story roof line. It's going to, you know, it's going to be easy. Second story is going to be a lot harder. That's going to take me longer. So I should be charging more for it. So that's what the app does. And We've got a lot of our clip of members that have been using this for years and they've been very successful. This is going to help you. So you're not losing money, um, you know, in this industry, this is a great industry. Let's make sure you're making money, you know, in this industry. But again, if you have questions, reach out to me personally, uh, if you need to, um, you know, you can message me, you can hit me up on Facebook, you can call me. I don't mind spending time. You know, we've got plenty of time till the season hits. I've got, you know, opportunities to uh, you know, help you out and make sure you understand this. 
can you access the map from your computer? Can multiple people use uh, it for the same app? Um, so I'm assuming you want, you're asking, I'm on the computer right now, obviously. So you're asking, can you access the map? I'm assuming you're talking about this map right here, job locations. I only have one job on there. If I had another job in there, let me see if I can put another job in here. Let me figure out another address. So let's do Joe Schmo. Oops, not New Jersey. Um, actually, actually, it'll actually pull up the addresses for you, which is pretty cool as, as you start typing. There we go. So let's do that one. <laughs> Click save. Go back to my map. Oh, job locations. Okay, so I've got two different, uh, I've got one right here, Joe Schmo, and then I've got one over here. My other install is down in here, and that's John Smith. Um, so I don't know, I, I don't know if that's what you're asking. Can you access the app from your computer? Yes, you can. So I can have my my sales rep can have, be in the field on their phone, their iPad, whatever it is, and whatever they, if they're out there doing an estimate and like, hey, boss, you know, I typed all this stuff in. Can you take a look at Joe Schmo's estimate? I want to see if I priced it right. Uh, I can access the same information as long as I'm la logging into the same account that the app is set up under. Um, this is the mine. I logged in under Matt at clipofwebsite.com uh, as long as they're logged in. So if, if you don't, if you do have a Gmail account and you don't want to share it uh, with you, you know, the, the username and password, because they will need to log into it, you might want to set up, it's free, set up a separate Gmail account for this app. And then everybody has the login information so you can access it. If you wanted to have, if you have two different sales rep uh, and you wanted different uh, apps for them, you would have to pay for two different uh, access on, on that app. Um, but if you don't care, if you just wanna share it and you can see different estimates and stuff like that um, throughout the, all the sales reps, you can do it this way. Hopefully that answers your question. Okay, anybody wanna jump on? I have any questions? Okay, if not, I'm gonna wrap it up. Okay, as I mentioned, please don't hesitate to contact me. Uh, we've got a lot of trainings. I don't know if you guys are aware of it. If you haven't been through a training, if you're just, you know, just wondering about the estimating app and you're here just like, oh, what's going on? Uh, I've got a lot of trainings I'm doing this year. So we're doing a lot of travel. You know, hopefully COVID doesn't restrict us from going out and doing the trainings. Love to have you guys out there. Um, you know, we do start with the basics, but I've had guys in my trainings that have been doing this for 10, 12 years. That came out of the training like wow and I, I learned something new and it was definitely worth it so if you want to come in, you know if you're an existing installer you've been doing this for a while we do have discounted rates for you for our trainings we have online trainings and when do we have in-person trainings um, that we're offering and it's all across the u.s so go to clip a website you can find out the dates and the, the times and the places that we're training at um, but we're very excited for it I'm, I'm very excited to get back on the road and train uh, and then the clip a conference we do have the clip a conference you don't have to be a clip a member to attend that the CLIPA conference is going to be great. It's a great social event. A lot of uh, CLIPA members show up there and a lot of non-members show up there. We're going to have some great uh, speakers talking about how to scale your business, talking about RGB basics, talking about RGB, you know, advanced options. Um, we're going to be talking about interior de decorating, design, stuff like that. So we're going to have a lot of speakers out there. It's going to be a great event. We're going to have a social event. We're going to go and it's just an opportunity to get out there and just network and and you know, talk to the guys that are doing really, you know, not that you're not doing well, but um, talk to you know the the pros of the industry, you know, as I call them. Uh, I learn something every year. I've been doing this for a long time, and I'm still learning. So networking with people, uh, it's it's a great community. And it's it's a great time to get out there and network. That's in St. Louis. You guys want to join us? It's at the huge. I'm sorry. That's at the Trans World, which is the largest Halloween show in the U.S. There is a Christmas show they added a couple of years ago. So uh, you can go to the show. It's a great event. And then we have the clip of conference uh, during the same time. So I'd love to see you guys out there. If you don't have any other questions, I uh, appreciate you taking the time to, to join. Uh, if you missed anything, you can always go back and watch it. 
reach out to me if you're having struggle, if you're struggling with it, if you're not sure about something, how that work. Don't hesitate. You can email me. It's Matt at clippainc.com. Uh, or you can shoot me a call. My phone number is 949-504-8302. Uh, don't hesitate to call me. If you call, leave me a message. If I, you know, don't get me, I will get back to you. Um, but uh, yeah, definitely make sure that you're reaching out to me if you have any questions on this. Okay. I want to thank everybody for your time. I appreciate you coming out and uh, hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you're excited about the season. I know I am. Uh, we had a great season this last year. And we're excited for this upcoming season this year. So very excited to get out there and uh, make some money. So thank you very much. Uh, appreciate you coming by and uh, we'll talk to you later.